Hi, I'm Dr. Galena, the lead pastor here at Cutting Edge, and this is our official YouTube channel. It's a place where I pray that you will grow and fall in love with Christ and increase your connection and commitment with Him through covenant building. We have a saying around here that if you have a covenant with God, then you have a God of covenant, and He is obligated to do things with you, to you, through you, and for you. Cutting Edge is already a part of some major humanitarian and social activism projects. We feed daily over 80,000 children in Zimbabwe. We help parents with special needs children, and we also are a part of criminal justice reform because we want to see the redemption plan for man. Thank you for partnering with us in your giving. All of our giving information is at the bottom of this screen. We know that you're going to love what you hear here. So please like, share, comment, subscribe right here and turn on those bell notifications. We get pretty busy here at Cutting Edge. And so you may miss us, but right here, you can catch all of our replays. We here at Cutting Edge believe that the four walls of the church is not the only place to experience the love of God. We're here to go to the four corners of the earth, and we're going to show you that this is the way.
there's nothing I can do to let you down. It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Going through the storm, but I won't go down. I hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the wind to call me. I, you would cross an ocean, so I wouldn't drown. You've never been closer than you are right now.
Hallelujah. I will be content in every circumstance. Jaira, you are enough. Glory be to God. Good morning. Good morning. So glad that you all are here. I'm Dr. Galena, the lead pastor here at Cutting Edge, uh, the campus ministry of Rum University, and we are praying with and for power. Um, we are going to be praying um, this morning, and then we're going to be studying this evening. I forgot to turn my light on. No worries. We're going to be praying this evening the effectiveness of this in this power realm. And I am so, so glad um, that we are in this place of praying with power. Um, I am excited tonight in Bible study. Uh, we are going to go through these. But I'm, uh, I, I was studying a little bit earlier today and um, I was looking at the law. I was looking at um, one of the one of the things that happens in court when you go into um, court and there is a flag in the courtroom. If the flag has the gold tassel around the flag and the gold cording on the flag, then you are under civil law. And what that literally means when you go into the court is that um, your civil rights are suspended if you go into the court and it has that tag. Now, if you go into court and the court does not have the flag that has the gold tasseling, you're under another law um, and there, your, your, your rights are not suspended. And so I began to pray into that. Um, for a couple different reasons. Now I'll go into the, the deeper study of it tonight. But the law changes depending on the banner, the flag that you stand under. And I tell you that that thing absolutely blesses my soul because what I know is that when we pray, we get to pray under the banner of the Holy Spirit. We get to pray under the banner, the name of the Lord, we get to lift up a standard or lift up a banner. And this is so important when we begin to pray um, for uh, in the name of Jesus, when we begin to pray in his name and understand the realm of power and authority that we are under, because then we, the, the whole, the, um, um, the whole order has to come subject to the banner that you are under. And so as we learn today um, and, and this week, as we learn to go through these powers and what these powers are, the, the, the uh, um, jurisdiction or the justification of this is that as you learn what it is, you'll have the confidence to stand under this banner. And this banner, this name is the name that we have to answer to or that will surrender or render us the judgment. And how many of you know that when we, we pray under the banner, when his, his, the, the name of the Lord, his banner over us is love. When his name is put as the flagship in our prayer life, then that is what everything has to come subject to. So I can't wait for you to understand the realms of power and understand what the um, uh, what is the, the justification behind this power, so that you can get the benefit of praying in His name. I'm telling you, if that doesn't excite you, if that doesn't put you on um, the the playing field and and in the realm of the Spirit, that God, uh, where God is going to answer, I don't know what else will. So we're gonna continue. We're gonna open up this prayer with our first intercessor, intercessor Rhea Wilson, who's gonna take us into our first realm of prayer. Get this. Get the step. We're gonna get the study of it this week. But get this prayer into your spirit and understand as we are praying under this banner, then God has got to meet us there. He's gonna judge us according to the realm that we pray in. Let's pray with uh, intercessor Rhea Wilson. Hallelujah. 
Oh, bless his name. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you, beloved. He's a wonderful God. And we are praying into the powers of God. Hallelujah. And I've been given the assignment to pray the Yawd, Y-A-W-D, the Yawd power. Glory to his name. God has strengthened and consecrated my hands. Hallelujah. And as Dr. Galena said, as we walk and move in these powers under the banner of God, everything that God has given our hands to do, everything, everywhere he's given our feet to tread, everything he's given us in uplifted hands to decree and declare unto him, it is done in that power. We are praying in the power, the yowed power. Hallelujah. And I want to share with you that there are negative side effects to rejecting these realms of power. And for the Yao power, hands that are not in submission to the Lord. These hands try to have dominion during rebe rebellion. You cannot, you cannot operate in the power of God, rejecting the power of God, the realms of power. You cannot see your hands prosper. You cannot God will not recognize your uplifted hands if you are in rebellion. Woo, glory to God. That means, saints of God, people of God, beloved, that we are to walk in obedience to the power of God, the love of God. We are to submit ourselves, mind, body, spirit, and soul. Everything that we are given to do by God should be submitted unto God, unto this power, unto this realm of glory, of power that we may, that people may see who he is in us and through us, that me, we may operate and move in this power. Hallelujah. I don't want to be in rebellion. I want that when I raise my hands and when I give God glory, when I surrender myself and whatever I put my hands to do, whatever work he gives me to do, under his banner, it is done. It is done in victory. Hallelujah. It is done in submission to God. There is nothing like operating in the power of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't reject this realm of power. Walk in it. There is a consequence for everything we do, saints of God. There's a consequence for being disobedient, for not walking in the realms of power, for not operating in them, for not receiving them and accepting them as the power that they are. Amen. Not believing. That is one of the greatest things we must do as believers. You must believe. You must not reject God and his power, but you must receive it. You must walk and operate in it. I want to share the scriptures that I've been given. Genesis 14 and 22 says, but Abram said to the king of Sodom, with raised hand, I have sworn an oath to the Lord God most high creator of heaven and earth. We know that a wonderful illustration Dr. Galena started with, when you go into court, we now can say, I affirm, I affirm. But when you swear an oath, mm, my God, my God, to the Lord, when you are promising something to God, when you are vowing to God, there is a power in that vow, but that vow must be submitted unto the, unto the banner of God, unto the banner of, the, of Yahweh's name. Hallelujah. We must submit ourselves. We must submit our hands to God. When you promise, when you say that God, I will do, I will obey, I promise to move in and through and with you and allow you to move in and through me. That is an oath unto the Lord. And you can't take that oath in rebellion. That, that power is not recognized if you're in rebellion. Amen. He is the creator of heaven and earth. And do you know what it means to make a promise, an oath unto the Lord? 
Abram was saying, I will not take anything God said for me not to take. I won't do anything God said for me not to do. I won't go anywhere God didn't send me. Huh? Hallelujah. I promise, I affirm, I swear an oath unto the Lord. Amen. I did a, a commentary search. Matthew Henry says, I have lifted up my hand. That is in religious swearing, we appeal to God's knowledge of our truth and sincerity. And also that same oath, that same raising of the hand also is a wrath if we swear falsely, we suffer the wrath of God. And lifting up the hand is very significant and expressive of both. Genesis 39 and three says, when his master saw the Lord was with him that the Lord gave him success in everything he did. Talking about Joseph and Potiphar. When his master saw, you see, when you are submitted unto God, when you operate in the Yao power and your hands are submitted to him, it doesn't matter what work you're doing with your hands. It doesn't matter. In Potiphar's house, Joseph was working. He may have been doing at that time physical labor before he was elevated. Hmm. Before his gift was making room for him. It already was actually. So it didn't matter what he had been stripped of. His coat ooh, that his father gave him. His freedom that his brothers took from him. He always had the presence of the almighty God, Yahweh, Jehovah God with him and whatever his hands did, whatever he put his hands to do under the submission of the almighty God, he was successful. No matter where he was, whether he was in Potiphar's house, whether he was in jail. Woo, come on glory, come on power. I don't care where you are and what you're doing when you're operating the power of God, you will walk in victory in God and in this earth realm. Isn't that so? Glory to his name. I'm stirred and I'm excited about the power, about understanding how to operate in that power. And then we go to Genesis 39 and 22. And it says, so the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison. And he was made responsible for all that was done there. Wherever Joseph went, he commanded by the power woo, of what God had graced him in that power, the yowed power. He was blessed wherever he went. He, his hands were blessed. He was in charge. He walked and operated in God's power and in God's glory. God was glorified by what Joseph did. Woo. As we do a work, we should work as unto the Lord. We should pray. We should, we should intercede. We should fast. We should love as unto God. And we should walk in the power of God. Don't reject his power. Love him. Bless him. Be strengthened by him in his power. Oh, glory. I love him on today. My God, I love the power of God. I can't move and do anything. Even the prayers that we pray as we intercede, as we stand in the gap. As we intercede, as we call forth these powers, as we move in them, we cannot do it without being submitted unto God. Our highest place is at his feet. My God, hallelujah. I will now share the declaration. This is what we want to declare. And these declarations are powerful. We are not just saying them with our lips. We are submitting these declarations. Mm unto the mighty power of Yahweh. We are submitting these declarations to the mighty power of Jesus. We are submitting these declarations declared in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit, moving in the power given to us by the almighty God. These are not just things we're saying, we're walking in them. We're expecting a move. They make a shift in the atmosphere and the earth. When you declare a thing, something changes. Something happens. So I declare, 
I am, we are reconciled to God of all power and I will submit my strength woo, and daily dealings to the Lord, the Lord's standard for my life. Let me read that one more time. I declare I am, we are reconciled to God, to the God of all power. And I will, we will submit my strength, our strength and daily dealings. I mean, everything we do from the time we wake up to the time we lay down our daily dealings to the Lord's standard for my life. There is a standard that God has set for you, beloved. There is a standard, hallelujah. And when you submit your daily life, this is a daily, everyday, intentional walk. Intentional walk. When you submit that daily, Hedarotasha, to the almighty God of grace and love and mercy, you are going to see a mighty move of that mighty God in your life and in the lives of everybody connected to you as you go through your daily dealings. Submit your life. I pray this prayer every day. I say, God, I give you me. I give you Rhea, my body, spirit, and soul. I give you me every day. My place is at your feet. Do with me what you will. Take my heart in your hand and turn it whatsoever way you will as the rivers of water flow. Take hold of the reins of my mind that I have the mind of Christ. Woo, right on my tongue, season my words with grace. Put a watch over my mouth. Everything you give my hands to do, God, let it be that you're glorified in the name of Jesus. Daily, submit yourself. Submit your daily, daily life to the standard God has set for you. And walk and possess by faith the power that God has given unto you by the blood of his son, by his love and his holiness and his righteousness, because he is a mighty God. God bless you, beloved. I love you. Praise the Lord. God is so worthy to be praised. And I'm excited about praying these powers for those of you that are joining in this, this morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome to Cutting Edge. This is our hour of power. So we're going to go right into this next realm of power. And don't worry, because you're going to learn the study of these this evening when we go through at 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're going to go straight to Evangelist Crystal Cager, who is going to take us into this next realm of power. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Wonderful to be here this morning. Uh, I am Evangelist Crystal Cager, and we are uh, moving forward in these realms of power. Uh, the next realm of power we, we will be looking at is the Koa power. The Koa power. And Koa power is strength that is given from God to angels, to people and to animals. Amen. Amen. Uh, this particular realm of power presents the rank and order of power. Um, and so our prayer is that we stay in our rank and remain humble. So there is a divine order to everything, right? There's a divine order. God is a God of divine order and he is a, um, a God of, of decency and, um, puts everything in its place in this divine order. Uh, the negative side effect of rejecting this realm of power is barrenness, lack of fruitfulness, because there is a lack of flowing in your rank and order. So if you don't stay in the order that God has designed, uh, you will forfeit your ability to be fruitful because you can't be fruitful if you don't do things the way God has designed them for you. So uh, when one tries to move in another realm of power than what is given to them by God, um, 
it throws everything off and then God can't um, move forward with what he's doing with you. And you can read more about that in the scripture, Genesis chapter four, verses 12. Our scriptures for this morning are Numbers 4 and 17, Deuteronomy 8 and 18, and Judges 16 and 17. So I'm going to read those. Numbers 4 and 17 says, And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, So uh, it just shows here that Moses was before Aaron. He was before Aaron and God designed it this way. God designed it this way. Uh, so we have to honor the rank and the position that God has placed each one of us in. So the people that are above us, the people that are before us, the people that God has placed um, in authority of us, we have to honor that. And we can't step on the toes or dishonor where God has placed us. It's his doing, and we have to respect and to honor that as um, his order of power and uh, rank in your life, because he does that by design. It's not by accident. It's by design. Honor the authority and the rank in your life. Uh, the next scripture is Deuteronomy 8 and 18, which says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. So we must understand, in, uh, as it explains in this scripture, that all power is given by God. All power, all uh, authority, all anything that any strength that we have is given to us by God. We are incapable of obtaining any power or any position on our own. It is just simply from the Lord. It is simply from God. And lastly, Judges 16, verse 17. Just a moment. Says that he told her all his heart and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me. And I shall become weak and be like any other man. So as you uh, may know, if you don't know that story, that comes from the story of Samson. And we know the story of Samson. His strength was in his hair. And God asked, um, God demanded of him not to cut his hair. Um, and that's the obedience thing. We cannot disobey God. Um bring them over here my notes sorry about that we cannot disobey god and disregard his instructions we must follow his instructions at all costs in order to um obtain power by god uh never be enticed by man to do something that will forfeit the power that's given to you by god uh there are a lot of cases where you can um, disobey God or you can be enticed to disobey God and they'll tell you, oh, it's not a big deal. Just do this. Just do that. Don't ever do that. If there is power given to you by God and he's giving you specific instructions in regard to that, then we must follow what God told us. And we must keep, uh, that is how we keep the power that God has given us. Amen. Amen. Um, so we are going to pray this really quickly and then I'm going to give my declaration. Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we worship and honor you this morning. Father, we give you glory and praise, God. We thank you for another day and another chance, Lord God, to worship and glorify you. Father, we thank we thank you right now, Lord God, for the core glory, uh, power, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for the strength, Lord God, for the different strength, strengths that you have given us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the order and, 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 and the... Um, 
divine uh, positions that you have given us, Lord God. Father, we ask, Lord God, that you give us, Lord God, the strength and the wisdom to remain humble, Lord God. Remain humble, Lord God, in the place, in the position where you have placed us, in the name of Jesus. Where you have placed us, Lord God, the people and the things that you placed above us, Lord God, that you have put in authority of us is not by accident, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, it is divine. It was designed before the foundation of the world. It was designed before we entered into our mother's womb. In the name of Jesus and God, we just ask, Lord God, that you give us uh, the wherewithal, Lord God, to honor, Lord God, and respect, Lord God. Give us the core power, Lord God, and enable us, Lord God, to respect the divine order. The divine order, God, that you have placed things in our lives, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord God, to recognize, Lord God, hallelujah, that it is you, Lord God, that gives us power, that gives us strength, Lord God. Any strength we have, Lord God, any uh, wealth that we have, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, anything, Lord God, that we have that propels us and pushes us, it comes from you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. It doesn't come from the natural. It doesn't come from any man or anything in this world, Lord God. It comes from you, in Jesus' name. So, Father, remind us of that every day, Lord God. Father, as we move in our everyday lives, Lord God, keep us humble and low to the ground, Lord God, in the fact, Lord God, Hallelujah, that everything we have comes from you in Jesus' name. And Father, Father, just like you demanded of Samson, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, let us deliver us, Lord God, from any temptation, Lord God, any temptation that comes to us, Lord God, to relinquish our power or to give, um, to do something, Lord God, in our lives, Lord God, that will cut off the power that you have given us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Help us to keep our eyes on you, Lord God. Help us to uh, keep our eyes on you, not looking to the left nor to the right, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, but to keep our eyes to, to keep our eyes on you. Keep our eyes focused on you, Lord God. And, 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 um, on the person, Lord God, on the one God, which is you, Lord God, that supply us with the power in the name of Jesus. Father, we will not cut off our power supply. We will not cut off our power supply for anything or anyone in this earth, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. But we will recognize, Lord God, hallelujah, that our obedience, our obedience is the key to power, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, our obedience is the key to our power and our position, Lord God. In Jesus' name. So God, we give you glory this morning. God, we thank you, Lord God. For every, every position. God, we don't dishonor it. We're not mad at it, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we honor where you have put us and where you have placed us. We honor the, the many strengths, Lord God, that you have given us. And we honor the fact, Lord God, that you gave them to us and we respect the order, hallelujah, the order and the position and the rank, Lord God, that you have placed us in, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And our declaration this morning is, I declare my strength is refreshed as a result of me staying in my vein and lane of delicated power. In Jesus' holy name, amen, amen. I yield the floor. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God, glory to God. The cages are on the move this morning, you all cut an edge, and so we are here and ready to pray. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to pray and be on the move. And we just bless God for what God has been doing through um, in Caesarea and Evangelist Crystal this morning. I felt the fresh oil of God. 
as I got on this morning. So we're going to continue in that flow. I have the Mimsala, the Mimsala power. We are praying the Mimsala power. Um, and this realm of power means rule, rank, order, and dominion. Uh, this is the dominion of God and his creation. Uh, the, the definition to the point of dominion uh, is state, rank, condition, or status. And so there are four realms, or four dimensions, I should say, to this realm of power. There are four uh, uh, dimensions to it, and we'll teach more on it on tonight. This is one of the most favorite realms, actually, of of power of Dr. Galen and I in conversation. And so we will definitely break this down for you. I'm going to get to the point of the negative side effect when you don't align in this uh, dominion, in this created power. Um, that's the language. It's, it's power created and crafted. It's crafted power for your life and for the standard of your life. Everything that God is doing for you is DNA specific. Um, everyone, everything that God releases to you is crafted and specifically designed for you. And so when you do not align with this, um, and there was a revelation that God opened up for me when it came to, when it came to his power. And it says operating in your delegated power and dominion without awareness of God's mercy. God's mercy endures forever. His love endures forever. And it is actually the mercy of God that opens us up to his power. And a lot of us only look at grace, the scripture that says from Paul, uh, when Paul said, in your weakness, my strength is made perfect, you know, my grace is sufficient. But there's a kind of power um, to enable you to overcome. That's the power. Grace gives you overcoming power. But mercy gives you rank and authority in power. So, so power is manifested differently in mercy than it is in grace <laughs> oh god and so these realms of power this morning are talking to us about our authority because it comes from our submission to the standard but when you recognize in scripture the mercy of god flows from the mercy seat in the courts of glory the mercy seat it's a seat of judgment it's a seat of worship it's a seat of authority. Mercy flows from worship. Mercy flows from authority. That's why C.C. Winans could say mercy said no. <laughs> she was singing a revelation that mercy gives you authority. All right. Say, Ramasi, tell the Mercy is what gives us dominion. This, oh, Jesus. Oh, I feel God this morning. When you have the outer court, the inner court, and the, and the holy of holies. That's what we're praying. This dominion comes from the Holy of Holies. This power, this realm of power, the Mimsala, comes from the Holy of Holies. And so we're going to go ahead and read our scriptures. Hallelujah. And out of the Holy of Holies, God created uh, things to be in rank and in order. His mercy created and put things in rank and in order. It's his mercy. That's why the Bible says his mercies are new. What? Every morning. Hey, I'm going to prove it to you that mercy is connected to the morning. Because the Bible also says that your unfailing love, let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love. Genesis 1 and 16 says, God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. So the constellations I, I, and the Bible says that the heavens declare his glory. The heavens are declaring his mercy. The heavens are declaring the fact that his mercy endures forever. That is the praise of of the constellations that is the story that they're telling they're telling the story of god's miraculous mercy and that's where you also get miracles signs and wonders from you get it from his mercy not just grace and we have downplayed mercy which is why i believe we don't have the authority god wants us to have to rule over serpents and scorpions and to tread upon um these particular powers and principalities because we're he did it through mercy psalm 103 22 it says, praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. Hallelujah. And then Psalm 145, 13. These are scriptures that were given in the Hebrew uh, understanding of Memsala because the prophets recognized that it was his mercy and his love that brought them into ascension and that brought them into elevation. Hallelujah. It was grace that kept them in the position. 
but it was mercy that brings you to the position. It's his mercy that opens up the gates, but it's grace that keeps you in the gates. All right. Hallelujah. That's why it says grace and mercy. Follow me all the days of my life. Hallelujah. Psalm 145 and 13 says your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. He's faithful in all he does and it has to be his mercy because mercy is a sign to covenant. And I'm going to tell you right now, mercy is a sign to covenant. Grace is too. But mercy, when there is no mercy, there is no manifestation. And it has to be mercy that opens the gates. Because if it's not for mercy, you can't show up if it's not for mercy. And so we downplay the role of mercy in the courts of glory. But it's not, it's not grace that has the main voice in the courts of glory. It's mercy. Mercy is speaking in the courts of glory. Mercy is the standard that God lifts up when the enemy comes in like a flood. It's mercy. So when the saints said, power, Lord, they were also saying, mercy, Lord. <laughs> and so our Father and our God, we praise you and we pray in this manifestation of this realm of power called Memsala. We understand that it is your by your mercy and your grace that we are here today in the name of Jesus, that this realm gives us the ability um, because it is the ability that you absolutely actually do not overlook our sin. Mercy doesn't ignore sins. Mercy requires you to worship. Jesus Christ. Mercy re requires in order for you to be elevated, you have to worship. And so, God, you said we worship you in spirit and in truth. And so we've been trying to pay the price, our own self. But grace and mercy has come and just required that we worship you in spirit and in truth. And in the, in the worshiping of spirit and in truth, we would be elevated. We would ascend to the hill of the Lord. And who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. It is the mercy seat that judges us. God judges from mercy and so this is why we can make our petitions this is why we can bring our supplications to you oh god every morning and our worship is as incense before you the altar of incense before you as a priest in the courts of glory and in the temple and at the gates we worship you and we bring up an incense of worship and it will be your mercy that will cause us to rest rule and abide so I decree and declare, come on, put up that declaration. I decree and declare, because my revelation was the prayer. I decree and declare that I have access, that we have access to the divine help and assistance in every season because I rely on the mercy of God towards me. I'm not just going to rely on grace. I'm not just going to rely on the strength to be somewhere. I'm not even there yet. To be in a place I'm not there, but it is going to be mercy that is going to be the transition factor. It is the mercy that is the vehicle that brings me into grace. It's mercy that brings me into grace. It's mercy that brings me into a place of grace in the name of Jesus. And so, God, I thank you that you've put in us a, a new enlightenment and a new revelation on the mercy seat and the power of mercy and what you were really displaying in the wilderness with the children of Israel, that you judge us from the seat of mercy, that you judge us from the seat of opening, from the seat of portal, from the seat of threshold of transition or elevation in your presence. And we just magnify you and we decree and declare that your mercy endures forever and it endures to all generation. And this is how you've caused us to rest room and abide in Jesus name. I yield the floor. Amen, amen, and hallelujah. I can just go in off the mercy. Pillar Kaja just brought us in to our final prayer point this morning. Has have it not been a great time in the Lord that we've been praying through the realms of power? It certainly has been stirring my soul. And so my prayer point to close us out this morning is called the Masao Power 
a power realm, the Masal power realm, M-A-S-A-L. And in this realm, it says, God will cause you to rule and reign. He will establish you to exercise authority. Now, before we get into the negative sides of rejecting this realm, let's read the scriptures that go along with that authority. And we're coming from Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse six. It says, for the Lord thy God blesseth thee as he promised thee. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, but thou shalt not borrow, and thou shalt reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over thee. Our second scripture for base on this morning is coming from 2 Samuel chapter 23 and 3. It says, the God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spake to me, he that ruleth over men must be just ruling in the fear of God. And our last scripture base for this morning is coming from Psalms 22 and 28. It says, for the kingdom is the Lord's and he is the governor among the nations. Now, so when we're talking about um, that God will cause us to rule and reign, there is a negative side that can happen if we reject this power that God desires to give us, right? So it says, you will be ruled by what you're supposed to rule. So you will be ruled by what you're supposed to rule. But the Lord has broken the scepter of the wicked, so stay aligned accordingly. So if we refuse to uh, let God give us rule and reign over the things of God and we allow uh, we allow sin to rule us, then that's what's going to rule our life. And I liken that to if we allow the flesh to rule over us, then we're going to be led by the flesh. We're going to let the flesh rule our life. And so it's important that we stay aligned with Christ. It's important if we want to have dominion in the land. If we want to have uh, God to give us authority and access and territory and things that he is causing us to do, bring us into, then we must stay aligned according to the word of God. We must stay aligned to where we're supposed to rule at. So, so I was um, saying to, uh, I was, did a live the other day, and this is right on, on target what I was talking about because it brought revelation to me. Listen, sometimes we pray a thing and we ask God to give us access or give us a new job, uh, bless us with a husband or, or if you're looking for a wife, whatever you're doing. But once we get that blessing, we stop praying. And that's where we want to go further in our Christian walk. Once we get a thing, once we get blessed and God has given us, given us the territory, given us to rule, given us to reign, we still must pray in that thing. We must still pray and ask God to continue to clear the way, continue to order my steps, continue to, oh God, give me the power, give me the power to rule and reign so that your glory may be manifested in that thing that which you have given me to do. And so it is not for me to walk by my flesh. It is not for me to allow the enemy to meet me, which leads us to, and then I'm going to pray, but our declaration for this power realm, it says, I declare I am not under the foot of the enemy. God has repositioned me and I walk in God-given power over the affairs of my life. So this morning we're going to pray. It's these realms of power, they bring us into the effectiveness and efficiency of the kingdom of God. These are the realms of God that take Take God's light, not our own light, not our own will, not our own way, but God's light and put it into action. And so when I desire to walk in the things of God, I must allow him to fully reign in my life. I must allow him to give me the access to exercise authority because he desires to do that, but we must stay aligned. So let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, God, for your glory. God, we thank you for your power. God, we thank you, God, for every word that has come across the screen on this morning. We thank you, Father, because you're such a 
kind father. You're such a merciful father. God, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for the mercy, oh God, that still gave us breath this morning. We thank you, God, for your grace that still allowed us to come and be able to pray on one accord, father. So we thank you this morning. We thank you, father, that you are mindful us, God. God, that you will look on us as sons and daughters in the kingdom, God, and give us access and authority, God, to rule and reign in the position and places, God, that you have governed us to do so, Father. So, God, in the name of Jesus, I pray now, Father, God, that you sweep through these airways, God, God, and touch our mindsets, Father, God, that we will remain humble, God, God, that we will stay aligned, Father, God, to your will and to your your way. God, that we will remain, oh God, subject to your word. God, that we, oh God, will obey. God, we will not be disobedient. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, God, that you will move, God. God, and let your spirit, God, continually fill us, God, and give us direction how to rule and reign in the land. God, it's in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. God, that we declare, God, that we will submit to you our life. We will submit to you our thoughts. We will submit to you our plans. God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you will give us the victory. God, that everywhere, Father, that our feet may try. God, that you will give us favor. Everywhere, God, that we will speak, Father. God, that you will give us authority. God, in the name of Jesus, God, to be the light in the world, to be the light, God, and put your blueprint, to put your plans in action in the earth, Father, God, because we desire, God, to operate in kingdom. So, God, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray now, Father, God, that you will decrease us, Father, decrease us in our own imagination, Father, God, but that we will seek you daily. God, that we will pray to you daily. God, that we will worship you daily, Father. God, why? God, because in your presence, God, there is fullness of joy. In your presence, God, we can find clarity. In your presence, God, we gain more power. We gain more strength. We gain more grace and mercy as we submit to you. So, God, we thank you this morning. God, we thank you this morning. God, that you, God, will continue, God, to get the glory. God, that you will save and set free and heal and deliver in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. God, that anyone under the sound of our voices this morning, Father God, that they will leave, God, with a new mindset. God, that they will leave God renewed God that they will leave God stirred how do shy God in power God to continue God to seek your face and so God we give your name the glory the honor and the power God that it all belongs to you it's in the mighty name of Jesus God that we pray it is so and so it is and I yield the floor in Jesus name Hallelujah. So we are praying through these realms of power. And we're understanding as we pray through these realms of power that God by design has given us ability, the capacity to move in him, to move under his banner. And as we've gone through these realms of power, and I have one more realm of power that I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray the eyes realm of power. And this is the power to fortify. This is the fierce power to stand and to build walls of protection as we go in. I can't wait to get into this realm uh, of, of uh, studying with you through these realms of power because there's such great revelation and there's such great application to these realms of power, especially this realm of power. This realm of power allows us to fortify the walls with strength and, and with fierceness. There is a fierceness in this power that causes us to not back down. You go into scripture in Nehemiah, the second chapter, Nehemiah faces Sambalat 
uh, Sambalat and Tobiah. And they are upset at him. Why? Because he is protecting and he is seeing about the children of Israel. And they don't want him to protect the children of Israel. They don't want him to protect the seed, the next generation. And so this power builds walls to fortify. Also in, I believe it's Numbers, the second chapter, we find, uh, uh, well, let me let me say here in um, in uh, or Samuel, when, when Nehemiah, I'm sorry, Nehemiah, when Nehemiah builds this wall and goes to protect the children, the Bible then declares that he's able to go to Asaph. Now, y'all know when we get into these worshipers, because Asaph was a priest, Asaph was a priest that also was the keeper of the timber, of the wood, or the keeper of the forest is what they called him, right? So he was, because the those were particular, there were particular trees that they would cut down to use for the tabernacle to house the glory. Okay, I'm not gonna get into the revelation of his word, but I want y'all to know that there are so many mighty connections. And this praise and worshiper, Asaph, who was also the keeper of the lumber, right? who allows him to fortify the temple with the wood, right? Who was also, when he begins to write songs uh, in, in um, when we see them in the book of Psalms or the divisions of Psalms, that his songs also are songs that fortify the walls, okay? That fortify our strength, that causes us to be strong and very courageous. Joshua is also told to be strong and very courageous and tells the children of Israel to be strong and very courageous. These, this is the power um, that we're talking about, this particular power realm that causes us to fortify. And so even Asaph uh, causes us to fortify our houses with worship. When uh, Nehemiah went to go and fortify the walls, he went before the king and the queen and he had a burden. So he began to cry out and they looked at him and they said, uh, what's going on? Why are you, why are you, why is your countenance fallen? And because he had a cry in his spirit. So I'm going to tell you that this realm of power, this Oswald of power, as I begin to study it, truly comes from compassion. It comes from worship. It comes for compassion for God's people. And so this is the realm of power that then fortified his plans and fortified his structure and fortified his ability to go in and save the people. And it was the power that he used and operated in to do it in cut time. Woo! Glory be to God. So I pray that not only does it allow us to be compassionate or it is it comes on because we're compassionate, but it comes on because we're fortified. I'm going to tell you, I'm a mama bear. And so I get, I get, woo, when I get compassionate about my people, about my children, uh, and they come to me and they feel protected. I believe it's because I'm operating in this realm of power. God caused him to not, he caused Nehemiah to not come down off the wall to also unify the others that were working on the wall and to do it in cut time. When we go to the stories in Exodus, the same, it is the same power that is mentioned when, when Moses uh, strikes the Red Sea and the water water walls begin to build and causes them to cross over into dry land. So we can tie this to deliverance of the people because there were walls. Listen, water is not supposed to be a wall. Woo! But when you operate in God's power and his authority, he will make something that was not even created to fortify us to fortify us. Listen, as a woman, and I'm going to talk to some single parents or some single women that are parenting their children. It, listen, we, we thought in our own power, we cannot protect our children. We cannot teach our sons to be men and to be husbands. But I'm going to tell you something. Hallelujah to all of you single mothers out there. God fortifies us. Woo! with his power and with his strength to do things that we didn't even think we were creating 
created to do because of our compassion. So Father, I thank you that your, your people of God are moving in a realm of power that causes them by compassion. It calms them. It brings them into a place by compassion to do the will and the work of the Lord, to fortify the walls so that we are protected, that we are shielded, and we are able to build in cut time. God, I thank you for a cut time anointing. I thank you that we're moving in power. I thank you that the strength of God is with us. I thank you, God, that it is causing us to be powerful, to be strong, and to be courageous, and to stand in might. And it causes us to be unified, single-minded, a mind to work. I Thank you that your people, we're not moved to the right nor to the left, but we are looking forward. We are looking to the hills from which cometh our help because our help comes from the Lord. And we thank you, God, that we are fortified by your power and by your strength to stay focused, to stay on task, to not be pulled by the right or pulled to the left. But God, we will fortify in your strength and in your power to do the things that are in our heart. Now, God, I thank you that you're looking in the heart of man. I thank you that our heart is focused and our heart is seeking and our heart Heart is turned toward you and our heart hallelujah our heart hallelujah is pure with the intent and the motive to do the will and the work of the one that sent us i thank you god i pray that you will fortify your people that understand your call and understand your purpose and are pulled out by you by compassion because you said it's with compassion that we would heal the sick that we would raise the dead that we oh rabbi that we would open blinded eyes that we would move move hallelujah even jesus was moved by compassion and so father we thank you that as we move in this realm today somebody declare it today i'm gonna move in this realm today we decree and declare the mighty hand of the lord be with us we decree and declare the strength of god be with us we decree and declare that the power of the most high god will cause us to do great exploits exploits things that we didn't think we could do things that we know we cannot do and we're not supposed to do alone. Today, God, we decree and declare that we're able to move according to your spirit. We're able to move according to your word. We're able to move according to your power in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to decree and declare hallelujah. I declare I will experience the redemption of my defenses and will be guarded on every side of my life from this day forward. Let me tell you right now, hallelujah, that the Lord has already redeemed you from your defenses. You are guarded and so the work that God has called you to do, you will be able to do it in Jesus name. We decree and we declare that, amen and amen. I am so excited about our prayer life. I'm so excited about being able to really get into the study of this today. I was listening to Dr. Uh, uh, Mike Murdoch and he said um, some very powerful things as he always does, but he talked um, about um, strength. And he talked about power and he talked about wisdom, but uh, uh, in, in this particular teaching. But what caught my attention, he said this, he said, you know, God was so in love with order. And I know I've said this before, but and that's why I think it caught me. The Bible says in, um, in, in John, for God so loved the world, which means he loved, that word means cos uh, cosmos or order. He loved order so much that he gave his only begotten son. He loved order. He loved putting things in order so much that he gave his only begotten son. I want you to know that as you, as God today orders your steps, woo, it is a thing that he loves above all else. He loves to order our steps. And it is through prayer that our steps are ordered. The Bible declares, whoo, 
know that the steps of the righteous man are ordered by the Lord. And I am so glad and so grateful that as we pray, even in these realms, that you are hearing today orders from the Lord. You're hearing today and you're strengthened by the things that God would allow and God causes you to do. You have an understanding of the power of God. And so you're able today to walk in the power of his word, to walk in the wisdom of his revelation and to see great and mighty manifestations. I'm so excited for you. And I'm going to, uh, uh, to invite you tonight to join us for Bible studies so that we will get into these realms of prayer. We will get into these realms of power and you too will be able to have your steps ordered by the Lord and cause him his greatest delight to put things in order. God bless you. We'll see you this evening.